Meditation, the master of five senses, the Nanak's way. In 16 Sutra or Pauri, Nanak says, Panch Parvan, Panch Pardhan, Panche Pavai Dargai Man, Panche Sohi Dar Rajan, Panchaka Guru Etyan. There are five organs of perception. Five organs of actions and meditation is the master of these five. The five approved are the prominent fives, exalted, they merit honor in his court, welcomed, they are at the door of the divine, immersed together in one Guru sublime. If one ventures to reflect and recount, the Creator's wood remains infinite and beyond. The bull as the child of religion's flavor. Set to maintain equilibrium to the cosmic effort. Ek Omkar Satnam We begin in the name of the divine reach to this inner oneness whatsoever be the path the moment you reach one journey completes all around we see duality and multiplicity everything is divided when an accident takes place the focus of the media the press and everyone remains on division, how many males, how many females. The person who has met an accident, is it important to know his gender or what is important that so many persons injured? The world came into existence by dissolving oneness. Oneness got divided in many ways. As the sunlight passes through the prism, it gets divided into its seven components. As far as the analysis is concerned, it is good. A rainbow comes into existence with this. When all these seven colors are united, there is white color. When white light decomposes, seven colors are obtained. When everything is broken, then a pilotra of colors evolve. The creation and the world of finiteness is full of many colors, but God is colorless. Existence or totality is colorless. When there is oneness, all colors and diversities vanish. Colors belong to many or duality. Every process of transformation, sadhana, is the process of searching that oneness emits many, oneness that emits multiplicity. Hindus say one got divided into two, matter and consciousness, purush or prakriti, male or female, yin or yang. And when you search one in the two, the search is complete. Another path says one got divided into three. Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram. Satya means that which is truth. Shivam means that which is eternal. And Shivam and Sundaram means that is beauty. And vision, truth has beauty or envision beauty in eternity or envision eternal in truth emits three you envision one. This is the Hindu concept of Trinity. Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram are no more. Only oneness, ekamkar, the existential sound remains. Journey is complete. 
कृष्ण से फादर सन एंड द होली स्पिरिट होली स्पिरिट इज द लिंक बिटवीन फादर एंड द सन फादर इज इनविजिबल द सन इज विजिबल फादर इज अनमेनिफेस्ट सन इज द मैनिफेस्ट रियालिटी एंड होली स्पिरिट इज दैट विच कनेक्ट्स द टू दैट इज द स्पिरिट consciousness or awareness nanak says one got divided into five because of five sense organs if you seek one emits five you have indeed attained and it is important to see the points and when you see the different points of view you attain to richness it gets divided as two everywhere we see the division on the basis of gender male female the field of operation and the energy three and nanak says one got divided into five because of five sense organs if you seek one amidst five you have indeed attained this is not so important in how many components one got divided what is more important is how you attain to that oneness you can choose any path and through that you reach to the oneness the most important thing is to attain to oneness sense organs are five kabir talks about 20 five organs of action five organs of perception these are at the physical level then at the subtle level again 5 plus 5 that makes 20 and emits that there is oneness that is 21 in most of kabir's compositions you will find the mention of 20 sense organs are five however there is one which is common amidst all these five that is one nanak says dhyan or meditation is one sense organs are five meditation is one try to understand this only then you will understand the secret of oneness if you go on counting the beads in a rosary you are missing beads are many there is something common amidst these beads that is this is that which sustains the beads on its own it remains a hidden invisible one who has shifted his attention from many beads to the thread that sustains has indeed got the sutra the principle to get hold of the invisible thread amidst the beads is to attain to godliness attain to meditativeness attain to that which is the crux of matter there are five sense organs what is that which is common amidst these when i sees who sees when airs hear who hears when hands touch who touches when nose smells who smells and one and when tongue tastes these are the five sense organs who tastes one who is behind all these sense organs is one dhyan or meditation quite often it happens you are having meals i have heard an ancient story a sanyasin came to an emperor the master has sent him to learn all that the master could not teach or the student could not learn the disciple could not understand how he can learn what he could not learn from the master he is now being sent to learn from an an emperor 
When he reached the palace, the emperor had a different congregation. Dance, wine and things like these were going on. Sanyasi became very sad. He thought he is at the wrong place. He even decided to return. This he mentioned to the emperor. He thought he came here with some expectation to learn from the emperor. However, there seems to be no chance of learning. The emperor himself seemed to be lost. The emperor responded, he is not lost. Wait for some time. Only then you can understand the matter. You cannot learn if you see things on the surface. Remember, you cannot learn if you see things on the surface and when you can look deep within, only then you can find the secret. Sense organs is not the secret. Secret is hidden behind these sense organs. The emperor requested the sannyasi to stay on for the night. Arrangements for his stay were made in a most luxurious and beautiful chamber. The bed was soft and comfortable. Above the bed hanged a naked sword from hanging from a delicate thread. It can fall any moment. This thread did not seem to have the capacity to hold on to the weight of the sword. The sannyasi could not sleep all night. All night he remained turning and twisting. His attention was on the sword hanging over the bed. Thread was so delicate that it may break any moment and then life comes to an end. To him it was an ugly joke. All arrangements were good, but why the emperor had the sword suspended over the bed? In the morning, emperor inquired of the welfare. At this, the sannyasi spoke of the beautiful arrangement for the night, but he could not understand the logic of the sword suspended over the bed. He could not sleep as his attention was on the sword hanging over his head. The emperor said, So, too, the sword of death is hanging over his head and that of everyone. The people are unconscious. The dancer is dancing. The wine was being served. But I am not in the wine. Apparently, I am not eating delicious meals, but I am not in the taste. The sword of death hangs over my head. Death may come any moment. Am I in the remembrance of that which is or not? Death does not give you an indication that it is coming. And the culmination of your life comes at the moment when something is happening. Are you conscious? Are you aware? Or you are not? You have been practicing that you will not get angry whenever any circumstance and situation comes. But when it comes, does it not happen that you forget all about you forget about all godliness. You forget about all that and you hurl a curse or you hurl some unpleasant words. These five sense organs are gateway or the doors to enter life. Remember, these five sense organs are gateways or the doors to enter life. Without these, you cannot connect to life. The more you are connected to these sense organs, you move away from you. Behind each sense organ is meditation. When energy moves out of these sense organs into the world, 
of duality the light is coming through the eyes it falls on the objects and beings and information is brought into this is how it happens if your eyes are closed the door is closed the light is not emitting out of that you will remain unaware of the presence of any object of being eyes is the gate or the door through which the information comes in these are known as organs of perception when energy moves out of these sense organs into the world of duality your attention goes outward sense organ is the way for your attention to go out door to go out normally through the same door you go out and you go in but when you go to a big conference hall or a busy place where many people are coming in and going out we have separate doors marked for entry and exit you enter through one door and exit from the other sometimes it does happen your attention moves away from one sense organ you will not be aware of the other sense organs your foot got pricked you are in pain at that time you will not be able to enjoy the tasty food pain is so intense that your attention cannot flow to the taste you are walking on the street all around beautiful people are there men women etc but you are unable to see beauty because your house is on fire someone greets you but this goes unheard your attention is on the fire to your house no sense organ can really experience anything without attention or meditation the energy field working behind it entire experience of sense organ depends on meditation when attention is given to the sense organ it gets alive it gets activated and becomes capable to function if you pull your attention from these five sense organs then five are no more only one or dhyan meditation remains through this sutra nanak explains the methodology now how to shift attention from from 5 to 1 try to understand this he says panch parva panch parva in nanak is simple he used the simple language that common man can understand and that is the beauty if you are scattered among amidst these five sense organs and five organs of perception you are lost along the way if you have understood the one you have a right home seeing a woman using the grinding stone that is the wheel kabir recited a couplet the couplet meant seeing the two grinding stones because it is two stones one on top and one on the in between the grains are put and wheel has a handle and you rotate the wheel with a speed with that pressure and a constant movement the grains break into pieces nothing can really escape the grinding wheel such is the nature of duality kabir explains to his disciples his son kamal asked kabir to say something about that which is in the middle of the pair of the grinding wheel in the second couplet kabir reminded kabir remembered the axle and he says axle which is in the middle because all that moves is moves around the axle 
Kabir remembered the axle in the center around which the two wheels are constantly revolving. He says that which comes between these grinding wheels gets crushed. However, that which holds on to the axle remains safe and therefore does not get crushed. So sometimes when you are grinding and you find that all the grains have not been crushed or grind, ground to a powder, you raise the lid and you realize that some of the grains got stuck to the center. So with the brush or something you bring it away from the center and start rotating the disc, the grinding wheel again and it gets crushed. Then it matters not whatever number you use, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 9. You can give any name to deviation. However, the destination is one. Whether this, the size of the circumference may differ, the size of the circle may be different, the area, but the center remains the same. Center remains one. The destination is one. Depending on, depending upon your deviation will be your path. It is your deviation number that will determine your path. When the oneness got divided into two, then the path will certainly differ from those in for whom the oneness got divided and it's five. And then furthermore it will be different than for those the existence or oneness got divided into two. Nanak explains this methodology of division in through this sutra. When you are eating, be meditating. The food is entering food is entering the stomach in a process. How does this process work? Very simple. First food goes into the mouth and then through esophagus it enters the stomach for the process of digestion to continue. As the food enters the mouth, taste is forming. Meditatively taste the food. And if you are meditative, you will find soon taste will be no more. Instead, meditativeness will remain in your hand. Meditation is the fire of awareness in which all that is superficial gets burned. Remember this, meditation is the fire of awareness. Meditation is the fire of awareness in which all that is superficial gets burned. I am taking these examples so that you can get the message of Nanak and understand it better. When you are looking at a beautiful flower, go on looking meditatively. Drown in the beauty of the flower and you will find the flower is no more. Meditation has remained. Like a dream, flower will disappear. Meditation is eternal and will remain. You may look at a beautiful woman. There are two ways. You can look at her meditatively. Like a wave on the surface of the water, her image will disappear. In that case, her beauty will take you to meditation. It will connect you to your being. Do not get lost in the woods of the world. In that case, you will be lost in the world if you are attentive in all the sense organs. You will find the form and nature of these sense organs will vanish and meditation will remain. And you have attained to meditation.
पंचा का गुरु है ध्यान मेडिटेशन इज द मास्टर ऑफ द फाइव मिस्टिक्स एक्सप्लेन आई सी एयर्स हियर नोज स्मेल्स हैंड्स टच हु कनेक्ट्स द टू इवेंट्स ऑफ सीइंग एंड हियरिंग टुगेदर आई एम स्पीकिंग and if you are seeing me as well you are seeing me through the eyes and listening through the ears how can you be certain that you are seeing and listening to the same person eyes and organ eyes and ears are separate instruments one brings sound and the other brings the image or form now these two gets connected who is the one that connects the two the, the activities of the seeing and the activities of hearing certainly there is there has to be a space behind each of the sense organ where all these individual sense organs pull their information bhagavad gita explains this as no war zone on the either side of that empty space myriads of army are standing together to fight with one another but there is an empty space and that empty space between the two sides of your brain the left side and the right side and there is a gap and that gap contains the information the preconditioned ideas the conditioning to your belief system all that information technology is between these two spaces that's where the problem comes in they act remain there like a virus constantly plaguing the information that comes into and pulled into that place certainly there has to be a space behind each of the sense organs where these individual sense organ pull their information such diversified information comes from different sense organs and gets centered at one point the inner space where all sense organs bring their individual information to pull is your being or soul or the consciousness or awareness the process that leads you to inner space is meditation without meditation you will not be able to ascertain that the person you, who you are listening and seeing is the same nanak says dhyan is the master of the five discordant sense organs dhyan is the master and these sense organs are disciples you have forgotten the master and consider the servant as the master this is the cause of your misery these sense organs are the medium for your meditation or attention to enter the world of duality and bring the information thus continues the life of duality because your attention goes outward but it does not come or because of the viruses it brings the information which cannot be processed there is virus between the two centers but server information comes into him because of the virus that is there it gets inflicted if you really want your life to be meaningful full of bliss and harmony then do not listen to these sense organs but that is the only source that is the only way that we can understand the things the sense organs are incomplete eyes only know the function of the eyes eyes know nothing of the function of the other sense organs 
Following these sense organs individually will lead you to a life of misery. You see an event. You see your husband or wife talking to someone. And you reach home. The conflict begins. Following these sense organs will lead you to a life of misery. In, in each individual you will find one sense organ prominent and you become the servant. Someone loves taste, he goes on eating. This is the case of almost everyone. Someone is intoxicated for taste, the other is for beauty. Still someone loves music. All these sense organs are windows to look outward or inward. If you are outside, you can look through these inward. If you are inward, you can look outward. All information comes to you because of meditation. You see or hear only that where your meditation is. A shoemaker, a jeweler, a musician may pass through the same place However, the focus of each one of them will be different. The essence of life, therefore, is to understand meditation. As soon as meditation begins, life energy begins to move inwards. The world and its duality will be meaningless then. All the masters and those who have experienced truth call this finite world of duality as illusion or the cyberspace. It is not that the world ceases to exist then. World is there. However, your focus is not there. You are interested in something else. You have no time for all these things which are ephemeral, which are meaningless, let me take an example of cyberspace. This space is seen nowhere, but it exists. And no one can deny the existence of the cyberspace. You are aware of the presence, but you cannot see. You can use this space for infinite reasons and benefits, such as the nature of Maya. It exists for an ignorant one and for the wise it is no more. So too the cyber space is for not an ordinary one. It exists only for those, for the one who knows how to use it. So is the case with the mail servers. The message always remains. And no one can open your message except you. This you can do anywhere in any part of the world. The only thing you need an instrument, the server and your password. With this you can decipher your message wherever you are. This is what you can call it as Akashic record. The divine cyberspace or divine museum or you can use any word where all this information is stored. The wise say God is truth and world is false. This does not mean that the world of appearance as you see it is false and non-existent. Your attention is now shifted from the world. If you are greedy, then your attention will be on the money. That will be your truth. Then you will not listen to the servants. Now you do not ask those who know nothing. Nanak says, meditation is the master of the five. And you want to say, Anything about meditation, 
introspect. There is nothing deeper than that. Meditation is very precious and no ordinary person can say anything about meditation. There is nothing more valuable than meditation. People go on talking about meditation without knowing. And these people have created problems in the world. Even those who know nothing go on talking about meditation is this and that and so on and so on. Nanak says, whosoever want to see must meditate, must introspect before sin. The world is not in this present state of chaos and misery because of the ignorant ones. It is in this state because of your so-called learned ones. The ignorant one knows nothing. There are many who are ready to see even those things of which they know nothing. They say, I think it is so. They do not know. Either you know or you do not know. There is nothing like think. Sometimes people ask, tell me, I said, I don't know. He said, still you tell me something. Why should I tell you when I said I don't know? I don't know the way, the how to reach to that particular place. But you live around here, you can tell. I said, I do not know. And I do not want to give you the wrong information. The only thing I can tell you, if you are smart enough and you are using a smartphone, but these days even the people who are not smart, they use the smartphone. And they do not know how to use a smartphone. If you are smart enough, you know how to use a smartphone, you can download the GPS system and you can find your way on your own. You don't need anyone else outside. I know many who know nothing of meditation and have a big following. And wherever these people meet, they want to know how of meditation as well. Nanak says, whoever want to say anything about meditation, be careful. Talking about meditation is like playing with fire. This is the subtle and most valuable. Introspect before saying. Make sure meditation has happened to you. Meditation is the methodology for transformation. You are giving suggestions to the others. You are playing with their lives. Your ignorance can lead them astray. Nothing is more dangerous than pretending to be a master, to be a guru. Remember when an individual goes to different persons, but all in vain, then he loses trust. He was deceived 99 times. This is the reason for so much atheism in the world. Nanak says introspect before saying, and if you know nothing of meditation, then it is better to remain silent. Nothing can be said about God. God is infinite, beyond boundaries. It is better to remain silent about when the question comes, Yes, indeed, something can be said about meditation. However, before saying anything in respect, try to understand meditation. Meditation means the method. Method to attain to oneness. And God means the experience or the ultimate fruition. Something can be said about the path if you have traveled. Not before. Nothing can be said about the destination. Destination you have to discover and experience on your own. The path has its direction and limitations. But destination is beyond all directions. I cannot say anything about God. Certainly I can show you the way to attain to godliness. Buddha's only point of view that is that he can point the way. 
Several times Nanak and Buddha said they are physicians. Nanak says nothing can be said about him. Certainly something can be said about the medicine. With the use of medicine, your sickness may disappear. After the sickness is no more, the expression of bliss and gratitude that fills you is health. And nothing can be said about health. So too, whatever is said about God will be in the negative way. All that you can say he is not this, not that. Anything said directly will definitely limit him. We can indicate the finite by pointing the finger. So to Nanak says, nothing can be said about. How can you prove the presence of God? And whatever you will say will be meaningless. God is not a person sitting somewhere. God is ultimate in experience of oneness and dissolution. God is the ultimate state of awareness. God is the state of existence when you are no more, yet still you are. This is a paradox. From one side you are zero and from the other side you are total. God is not a person or principle or any hypothesis. God is the ultimate in experience and nothing can be said about God at all. Definitely something can be said about meditation and whosoever says anything has to introspect before. Make a point that you will say only that which you know. The simple technique will transform your life. Mind always wants to exaggerate. This nourishes ego. Be careful of this tendency. Never say anything about God and meditation. Life is vast. You have been a businessman. You have only known a fragment of life. You can only say that you are a businessman. Also, business is of different types. Even in business, your experience is limited. Newton said once, people think that I know a lot. I am like the one who has picked up a speck of sand from the seashore and consider that he has all the sand in his hand. Newton said his knowledge is like a speck of dust in his hands and that he has picked up from the shore. Such is the situation of all those who have known.